promise today. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers today. Welcome to the promise today. If, if this is your first time to the promise, welcome. And I hope that you don't leave the same way you came. I believe that you're going to leave changed today. Praise the Lord. I don't think we should ever come and leave the same way we came, but I believe that God has something for you today. Praise the Lord. Let's get behind our praise team today and just begin to worship the Lord. Let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise one more time. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Oh, doesn't it feel good to praise the Lord? Doesn't it feel good? Hallelujah. We all know the Lord's good. Let's sing this old song together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Let's sing that again. Say, Lord, you're good, yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Oh, yes, say we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you you are good. Isn't it good to us? Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy is good. Yes, God. We're thankful, Lord, for all you've done. Lord, yes, you are, are good. From generation to generation, we worship you. Yes, we do, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Oh, yes, say. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship, we worship you. You are, you are good. Oh, let's put our hands together. God's been good. He's so good. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. I say you are good all the time and all the time. You are good. You are good all the time and all the time. You are good. Help sing. You are good all the time. I believe you all good. the time. Every day. You are every good. Day. You are good all the time. Yes, he is. All the time. Come on, you let's are sing good. Again. Say, you are good all the time. And all the time. God always. You are good. You are good all the time. And all the time. You are good. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. One more time, let's say, we worship you. Hallelujah, we worship you for who you are, who you are, who you are, you are good. Come on, if God's been good to you today, I always feel better when I give him praise. He's worthy of it. It's why I was created is to worship Him. Come on, let's do that together this afternoon. Praise God, praise God, praise God.
praise God. You are worthy of every praise, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I'm thankful that I was created to worship Him. And I'm thankful that I can praise Him anywhere and anytime. It just feels easier and almost compelling when I come into His house, Brother Larry. I can praise Him anytime, and I want to. Driving down the road in the car, song comes on, I'll sing along. But it's just better when we're together, and it feels right. So thankful that you're here today. You had options today on, on holidays like this, Mother's Day. You had options of places to be, and you've chosen to be in the house of the Lord. And we're thankful for that. We want to take this time now to pray, and it's been referenced, and it will be again. Today's Mother's Day, and uh, I want us to pray for uh, maybe for those. To, you know, Mother's Day is a happy occurrence for a lot of us. Thankful that I've got uh, my mother and my second mother, grandmother, still in my life. But it's a day of loss for a lot of people, and that's okay, too, for us to think about those things and reflect on that. Let's pray that God would comfort those that need to be comforted today on such a day and let us worship God together and receive something from Him today. So let's pray for those who are having a good Mother's Day and maybe those that it's a little challenge. But God can take care of that. If you have a need, just lift your hand. God knows what they are. Whether we speak it or whether we just lift it like this, God's the God of all things. Would you lift your voice and let's all pray together. God, we love you and we thank you today. We're honored to be in your house this afternoon. God, it's a blessing every time I can come. I'm privileged, God, to be in your presence. I'm privileged, God, to be with good people that want what's good for one another. And we're thankful for such a great church. I pray, God, that you would help us today. God, you know every need. You know every circumstance. God, you know those who are sick. You know those, God, who are sad. You know those, God, who are oppressed in their spirit. Maybe they're lost and undone without you. You're able to take care of each and everything that we would have need of today. And God, we put it all in your caring, loving, and capable hands today. Bless our service and every moment that's spent here today. Let it, God, be uplifting and glorifying you and making a difference in people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you put your hands together and love the Lord with a praise to Him. We're going to sing about the wonderful love of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful for the love of God. Hallelujah. I have been touched and changed, healed, totally free from sin. Every shackle broke, and now I can live. Let's all sing. I have been touched and changed. And I'm so glad about it. Totally, totally freed from sin. Sin. Every shadow broke. Now I can live again. I've been restored. I've been I've been restored, I've been renewed, I've come alive because of you. Well, thank you, Lord. I have been set free by your love. Every been changed and healed totally free oh let's sing along with it's a testimony song every every shackle is now broke and now I can live come on let's say that one more time I've been touched 
Thank Him for His great love today. Without the love of God, where would we be? Come on, without the love of God or the church or somebody reaching out to me, where would I be today? Yeah, God, we thank You today. We thank You today. We thank You, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Thank You for Your... What well, feels good to sing about that love, doesn't it? I like singing testimony songs we can identify with. Can't sing that song and think about the words without something inside changing. But we're, we're celebrating. A lot of us could tell a lot of stories about how much our mother's love has meant to us maybe and how, how maybe we deserve a little bit more than we got when it comes to fixing. I know I deserve a lot more whoopings than I got. But uh, mother's mercy, maybe she stepped in between Brother Phil over here. Said not so much, you know. But I love our mothers in our lives. But without the love of God, we'd certainly be lost. And I'm so thankful for that today. Well, Brother Larry, I believe, is going to come and talk to us about something real important. Make some announcements for us. Would you welcome Brother Larry Ragsdale as he comes today? Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to give everybody an update on Bible school. Uh, the dates, we're a month away. Uh, the dates are June 12th through the 15th. That's a Tuesday through Friday at time. Tuesday through Thursday is 6.30 to 9, and then Friday night is 7 o'clock, and we open it up for everybody on the finale night. The ages are kindergarten through the teen class. Brother Chase is going to be teaching our teen class again, and it's been such a big asset to our Bible school, and we're looking forward to that. And we have been blessed here at The Promise for the last few years on so many people have been willing to help us. And so I want you to know that I appreciate all that you've ever done. As we enter into another year, uh, we're looking forward to it. And uh, I also want to make mention of this. We had our penny drive last year. We've been doing that for years and years. But our total we took in was $2,100. And so what we do with that is we take that money that we received last year in Bible school and we fund this year's Bible school, and that's about what we spend. So to each of you that gave last year and contributed anyway, we want you to know that what you gave is helping us this year to teach our kids about Jesus Christ, teach our young people about the Lord. And I pray God's blessings upon you for all of that. We're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I, too, want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers out there. My stepmom wish you Happy Mother's Day. 
Jenny today. I'm very excited to have my mamma with us today. She was able to come. So good to see her. I believe this is her first time this year. So we're glad that she was able to make it this morning. I love you. Good to see you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Mamma Linda, I love you. Happy Mother's Day to you. I have a couple of announcements uh, we want to make. We'll be back here Wednesday night for our family night. We have uh, adult Bible study here in the sanctuary. Uh, Pastor Vickers will be teaching the solution class this week. Brother Ben will be traveling. And then we have our children's ministry, our bus ministry, that will be this Wednesday night. This coming up Saturday, we have our men's fellowship breakfast that Brother Gary Pearson has orchestrated. It will be at the Golden Corral at 8.30 a.m. Your breakfast is paid for, men. So come out and enjoy a free breakfast this Saturday. We're going to be talking about missions. Come prepared to give an offering toward missions. And we are also excited to announce that Brother Christian and Sister Carson are traveling today. And our college and career event will be this coming up Friday night at our farm in Dungannon, Virginia. We're going to be having a cookout out there. See me if you need directions. You can text me, text Christian or Carson if you need the address to that. It's going to be at 6.30 this Friday night. This is going to be the first night that our high school graduates, our, our seniors that were in high school, are invited to come to the college and career this week. Text us. We'll get you the address. We're meeting at the First Lady at 5.45 to carpool over there on Friday night. Would you welcome our pastor as he comes? Let's give that hand to the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God. Amen. With a voice of triumph. Amen. This ovation is for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He deserves it. Amen. Some of you are standing, and that's great. He deserves a standing ovation. Hallelujah. The Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're glad to see all of you in the house of the Lord today. So thankful for all of you mothers uh, that are have joined us here and grandmothers this afternoon we're so grateful uh, for all of you it's been said a number of times uh, but we want you to know that we love you and it's a shame that that each one can't come up and recognize their mom or their grandmother uh, but uh, on behalf of everybody that don't get to uh, let me say to all of you moms and grandmothers that you are dearly loved and dearly appreciated uh, and I happen to be one of the ones that gets to I love my dear wife, so thankful for her, the mother of my sons, my mother-in-law uh, here this afternoon. So glad that you're here. And I, Is my mom here? She switched seats. She's shaking her head no. I'm glad my mom's here. and uh, We're just glad to see all of you uh, in the house of the Lord today. Um, I want to uh, brag on somebody. I used to get so mad at my little brother, Jacob. Uh, when he was in living in Potts Camp for 18 years, we saw him, Brother Larry, anywhere from three to five times a year. Uh, National Christian School competition. Uh, we'd see him at during the holidays, and then maybe another spot here or there. You know, just two, three, four times a year if we were lucky. And he was always in such a hurry. When, it, when he was here to get back to Potts Camp because he said, I can't miss service. You know, i, I got to be back. You've got to be part of... Uh, of and I'm like, dude, they'll, they'll understand. You only see us three, four, five times a year. and it would be okay, but he was that devoted and dedicated. Uh, and I, I, I appreciate that now. I didn't like it back then. Well, one of our leaders uh, uh, is not with the mother of his children uh, today. Brother uh, Ben's family uh, took off to Florida when they leave yesterday, and they're going to be gone next Sunday, and so that he wouldn't miss two Sundays in a row, he's flying out tomorrow morning. I think that's awesome. Uh, Brother Ben, we appreciate you. 
We, we appreciate Brother Ben. He does a lot around here. And we lean on him a lot. And we count on him a lot. Uh, amen. We, we, we appreciate him uh, for doing that uh, today. Uh, something else I was going to tell. can't remember what it was. Oh, I know what it was. Kirsten and Kylie and Crescent and Candace. And Candace, I wasn't hi-hatting you the other day at the gas station. I was getting tricked out of $10. I, I happened to see her in my peripheral vision, or Coach Myers would say peripheral uh, vision, and, and Candace was just waving about the same time this girl was tricking me out of some money. So, But anyway, I wasn't high hat you. We're glad uh, that you're here today, and, and we're so glad. Uh, an old friend of mine from way back in the neighborhood, up, up we used to live on Rose Lane in Mount Carmel, and I, there was a swimming pool up up. Uh, uh, in the neighborhood and ball fields and tennis courts and we spent so much time up there and that's how I met a young man by the name of Andrew Keith I was I think I was 11 or 12 somewhere in there when we moved in that neighborhood and uh, I felt led to just write him the other day on social media and invite him to church to hear Jacob last week as a matter of fact he didn't make it last week but there he is tonight welcome to the promise we're honored to have you Andrew you make yourself at home Amen. Aren't we glad to have all of our guests, all of our visitors here today? Amen. Amen. We're going to ask you if you would to stand. Our ushers are coming at this time. We're going to receive your tithes and your offering unto the Lord today. Amen. Until we work it out otherwise, uh, our middle section will march and bring your tithe. Hey, Jack. I didn't see you down there. Uh, our middle section will, will march and bring your tithes and offering, and we'll pass the plates on the two side sections. Brother Dustin, would you ask God to bless our tithes and our offering today? Amen. Let's take a few moments. We'll shake some hands nearby. Love one another in fellowship for just a few minutes.
Amen. Thank you so very much for all of your giving tonight. God bless you. We're going to start our Mother's Day program at this time. I'm going to ask Sister Lauren if she will be making her way. During the course of the next few minutes, we're going to smile a little bit, maybe laugh a little bit, and maybe even cry a little bit. This first segment is the laughing part, okay? So it's okay for you to smile and to laugh. And as she's coming, gathering herself, Brother Ben Christian called me the other day just to tell me he was worried, wanting me to help pray about this. And I said, he told me, he said, I got a new phone. And he said, I put mom's phone number in there. And he said, when I was getting ready to put the word mom in there on the uh, phone pad, he said the uh, M and the O are on the sixth digit. So mom was 666. Uh, and I was worried about that, Sister Sherry, till I realized that all moms are 666 on the phone. <laughs> on the phone. On the phone. Would you welcome Sister Lauren? She's going to help you smile a little bit today with some very funny mother's quotes. I'm a little too short for that. I'm going to take it out. I need to have some freedom here for my laughing. If you don't think this is funny, please laugh anyway. So I don't feel bad about myself because this has cracked me up. First of all, happy Mother's Day once again to everybody especially my mom, the one and only at Miss America. Um, that's her social media name, so I'll just <laughs> leave that right there. So this list was actually inspired by a conversation that I had with Sister Jenny about weird things that my mom has said to me over the years. And we were just kind of chatting, and I was like, you know, I don't even remember what got us on the subject, but I was like, this one time like sticks out in my mind so much of just like, a weird rule my mom made up and one night I was 18 so the <laughs> that's just a whole nother thing but I was going to a cookout thing with um, some friends and it was like kind of getting dark and it was a super moon my mom gets freaked out about anything to do with the sky the stars the moon if anything is like abnormal it just really does something to her I don't know so you can imagine what brother Allen did to her last year but <laughs> There was a super moon, and my mom calls me, and she's like, Lauren, you've got to get home right now. The moon is huge. It's a, <laughs> it looks like it's about to touch the earth, and I just need you to come home. Like, you can't go do anything tonight. And she was being serious and, like, hounded me until I finally was like, okay, I'll come home. Hey, guys, can't come hang out tonight. My mom, mom says the moon's about to touch the earth, so I got to get home. And <laughs> so from there... And I don't know why, but I was just like, the things moms can make up and create a rule. The moon's too big. you got to come home. So from that, I just thought, well, I wonder if there's any more moms at the Promise that have said some weird stuff to their kids. So I started sending out some texts. And I will start off and say that I could write a whole book on the stuff my mom personally has said. I'm going to throw out two more. So during, like, I was making this list and kind of going over some stuff with my mom, reminding her of some things that she had said over the years and she said if you say that I will cut you <laughs> this <laughs> was like okay I'm gonna start the list with that um, the second thing was new this is a new thing that she says and it is I'm not old I'm gold <laughs> so Tina go ahead and put that on a shirt that's a good one so I reached out to uh, brother Brandon Church are they here? Oh, they're not even here. But he said, well, the only thing I can really think of is when Nikki gets road rage, she calls herself Nikki Bobby, like Ricky Bobby from Talladega Knots. I mean, we don't watch that movie, but if you did, that's what it's from. So I texted, texted Brother John and asked him, I was like, come on, now your mom has to have some good ones. And uh, he kept it pretty simple and said, I love you, but I sure don't like you. That's pretty universal across the board, I think. Yeah. Bethany, sub I'm acting like they submitted it like I'm on a show. Bethany from Churchill submitted. Last year, I made cupcakes. Christian wrote a poem, and Haley forgot to do anything. 
Mom just looked at her and said, do better next year. <laughs> Bethany also submitted this one on behalf of uh, Mamma Linda. She said, also, Mamma Linda, no matter what we say, how is church? Where are we going to eat? She says, who's pregnant? <laughs> So this one, I, probably, I don't even have to say the name of the mom. You'll know right away. Gary, you know we tuck our shirts in for church. <laughs> I could just see that one. This one was very original. I loved this, and I, I'm going to remember this. Um, this one was submitted from Sister Crescent Flannery, and it said, well, one of the things that's really sticking out is when we go to a restaurant, my mom looks at the girls and says, now leave your testimony. If you don't know what that means, it means clean the table before the server gets here. Leave your testimony, girls. Get that table cleaned up before the server gets here. I'm like, I love that. The things Christian moms will come up with, you know. I love it. Okay. These came in from Sister Kristen and Sister Rachel. The first one is, you know you'll go to hell for lying. <laughs> the second one, Rachel, I'm going to film you so you can see how you're acting. <laughs> and the third one, which, once again, very universal, don't make me come over there and pray for you. <laughs> um, this one, listen, Bethany just pays attention to what people say because she was feeding in on other people's moms. She was giving quotes for other people. So she said this one, you know that you're going to get a disease from kissing a girl, Jenny. That one came from Jenny to Isaac, maybe to Chase, I don't know. She said it to somebody. The next one, <laughs> this one, I really had to think about this one when I read it because I couldn't figure out what was funny about it. And then I was like, oh my God. The cleaning lady is coming tomorrow. Make sure you all clean your rooms before she gets here. I guess so. <laughs> so that they look cleaner than they are. I don't know the boys, but I won't say who that one came from. This one says, well, my mom always told me that when I got older, I'd grow out of my baby fat. Well, mom, 30, I'm 30, and that still hasn't happened, so you got some explaining to do. That one, I'll also leave that one out. I won't, I won't say the origin of that one. This one is more a little bit of a story, and I'm almost done, but there was just so many I couldn't, like, not put these. So this one came from, this was a collaborative one between Bethany, Haley, and Christian. By the way, I text a lot of people and ask for quotes. So for those of you who submitted these, thank you. For those of you who didn't, thank you for nothing. You know who you are. But this one says, Mom was on the couch. We thought she had been asleep for a long time. Out of nowhere, she jumps up and says, Oh my gosh, did I just dream this or did I write a number one hit? And proceeds to sing, Girl, you talk too much. You never shut up. Also known as a song made famous by Run DMC at some point in his life, Julia Johnson. And she really thought she made it up until they told her otherwise. I could only say that one because she wasn't here. Um, this one is, this quote actually, I just want to know, I'm not a mom so I don't know this, but when, they, when you have a baby at the hospital, do they give you like a handout on this one and they say, okay, here's how you feed the baby, here's how you change the diaper. When they get old enough to smart off, here's the first thing you need to say. I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. Every mom just says that when I'm like, where, where that, that's so violent. Where did that come from? I'll, I'll cut you. Yeah, fruits of the spirit, people. So <laughs> the next one, this is, goes out to uh, Mama C, and Shanoa gave me this quote, and she said, say this with excessive attitude. So I'm going to try. You better ask somebody. I don't know what that means, but apparently that's something in their house. And then this one, if you're a mom of girls, this one will really connect with you. Girls, get your hair out of the drains now. <laughs> that cracked me up. And then uh, next to last one, every, kid, every mom says this. You, you know, they give you advice. They're like, well, you can't argue with crazy. Every kid during an argument with their mom. Yeah, you know what? That's right. That's so true, you can't. 
And then the last one I'll leave you with is there was a lot of people that responded to my text, and this is what they all said. I don't know if we should be concerned or laugh, but it says, I really can't think of anything appropriate for church. Whoa. So I hope to see all of you moms in the altar tonight praying. We'll work on this whole Fruits of the Spirit situation and things that are appropriate for church. So happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Sister Lauren. Amen. There, there is only one Sister Lauren, that is for sure. Well, what would Mother's Day be without a top ten list? So here is our Mother's Day top ten list for 2018. These are the top ten things that happen on Mother's Day weekend. Are you ready? Number 10, husband plans turkey hunting trip with old friend he hasn't seen since high school, but he'll be home by Sunday night. Number 9, teenager walks up to mom on Sunday morning and asks, Mom, what would you like for Mother's Day from the app store number eight on friday night husband experiences dangerously low blood pressure drop and severe anxiety when he discovers amazon prime cannot deliver by sunday morning number seven husband and kids scramble to the garage late saturday night to handcraft a special table for mom made from raw tuba fours and an old cabinet door. It's a beaut. Number six, Sunday morning. Breakfast in bed from the kiddos consists of milk and Doritos. Where's dad? He's at Walgreens. Number five. Mom opens gift. It's a t-shirt that says, I'm still hot. It just comes in flashes now. Number four. <laughs> Having his turkey hunting trip canceled, husband plans a fishing trip for the weekend with a guy he just met in the paint department at Lowe's Husband defends his decision with he's a cool guy argument. Number three. Mom hints about wanting a mini excavator for Mother's Day. And that's an inside joke. Number two. Husband and kids rush past mom on Sunday morning towards the door. Mom asks, where are all of you going in such a hurry? Kids look at dad. Mom looks at dad. Dad says, we're not sure yet, baby. Bye. <laughs> and the number one thing that happens on Mother's Day weekend, daughter looks at mom and asks, what's it like having the world's best daughter? Mother answers by saying, I don't know. You'll have to ask your grandmother. <laughs> and that is your 2018 top 10 list the Bible says laughter is good like a medicine amen and, and uh, so we wanted to give you just a few things to smile about today we're going to ask sister Jeannie to come and she's moving into the more serious aspect of today's program so would you welcome sister Gina Gillenwater as she comes to sing today
Sister Gina, praise God. Uh, I want to thank Brother Chris Crawford and Brother Shane's absence. On, he's been on a cruise. They've been out of the country, I think. And Brother Chris, I've been texting him this week. He's been working, uh, trying to put some things together. Brother Chris, I thank you. We have a video now that's about 90 seconds. Thought you was going. thought I was going to say 90 minutes, did you? 90 seconds long. And then Brother Ben is going to come and sing a beautiful song called If I Could Just Hear My Mother Pray Again. Let's go back to that little place where we used to go in the summer days. The lodge by the water still my favorite place, and I could come every year and it wouldn't change. of this old song early this week. We'll try to put it together. 
And my mother was playing the piano for me. And even if she wasn't my mother, I couldn't do without Sister Sherry on the piano. But I, there's a whole lot in life I couldn't do without Sister Sherry. I'm not sure if I'd be in the church without Sister Sherry. So, long story there. But uh, a lot of mother's love and a five-pound bag of Washington apples flying past your head will change a man. <laughs> Thankful for Sister Sherry. And uh, she gave, Sister Lauren, I didn't send this to you. Most of the things that I could share that would be notable that my mother has said to me was actually things that were introspective. I'll transition if, Mandy, if you're watching... My mother told me never date anybody that you couldn't marry one day. And I found her to be true on that. And I found the right one. Mandy, I love you. And I honor you today. And uh, this old song here is a good one. Mama, can you play now? Let's go. Let's go. How sweet and happy seem those days. Of which I dream When memory recalls them now and then And with what rapture sweet My weary heart would be If I could hear my mother pray again Amen. Thank you, Brother Ben. Let's lift our hands right now and love the Lord. Could you do that with me right now? And take just a moment and love the Lord. Jesus, we love You today. Jesus, we are so thankful for today. What it represents. We love You. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Today is a very unique and a very special day. And I'm very glad, very honored today to have my angelic mother here at church today. First time she's been here in about six months. And I, I want you to know, Mom, I honor you today and I love you dearly. Love you. I also want to give honor to my mother-in-law. If there's ever been a virtuous and a godly woman, if I've ever met one, Sister Linda Lovelace is that. And I give you honor today, Mom. God bless you. My wife today, uh, she told me, she said I was, uh, she was over at our place in Virginia. And she said I had the windows open, I had gospel music playing, and I was cleaning. And she said just that smell of cleaner and the windows and the wind and the music playing, she said it took me back to my childhood and she said some of the happiest days of my life were coming home from school and mom would have clothes washed and clean and folded on the table Magruder's playing on the radio and that smell of cleaner and my mom just in there working I, I just thought that was beautiful honey it's a it's just a wonderful memory of your mom and I also want to give honor today to the first lady of this church uh, we love Sister Wendy very much, and we, uh, she deserves the very best Mother's Day. We love you very much. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. God bless you. I also want to give honor to uh, our other associate pastor's wife, and Sister Sherry. We give you high honor. We thank you for all that you do for the kingdom of God, Sister Sherry. Amen. And uh, also, I want to give honor to Sister Opal Ragsdale today. I love Sister Opal. And and I give you honor. She was my, a lot of our, that's been in this for a long time, she was our youth pastor's wife. And that causes you to have a mothering heart. And uh, I've talked often about Sister Opal being like a second mother to me. And I love you today. And we give you honor as well. Also, go ahead. Also, I want to give honor to all the ministers' wives, like Sister Gina, Sister Whitney, and all those ministers' wives, Sister Lisa Ratliff. And I'll get in trouble if I start naming names. But, and then I want to give honor to my beautiful wife today. I love and appreciate her so very much. And since day one that she became a mother and continues to be an incredible mom who fights on her knees, you don't know that because you're not at our home. But she fights on her knees for Isaac and for Chase and also for all of her nieces and nephews. And I love you today, and I wish you Happy Mother's Day. Give you honor today. And so we've uh, laughed a little bit, and uh, so we may cry a little bit here too, but to all of you that are here today that are mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers, I want to say to you, be blessed today because you are. And be honored today because you are. And be filled with joy because you deserve it. You deserve it. And every single mother in this building today is making this world a better place. And every one of you know, all you mothers know, that without you, your house and your home would come unraveled faster than a mummy on a merry-go-round. And you know it, don't you? You know that. We, we need you. We need you. You are very valuable. Some of you older mothers 
can attest to this. You carried your, carried your child for nine months physically and have carried them financially for 20, 25, 30 years. Because we need you. We need you. But at the danger of being serious, <laughs> here today we have single moms, we've got some stay-at-home moms, and we've got some working moms. And we've got some young moms, and we've got some older moms. And all of you know better than anybody that you have wore some of the titles that I'm getting ready to name. Every mother has wore some of these titles. Boo-boo fixer, hugger, diaper changer, food fixer, bottle washer, laundry doer. I could stop right there, but I'm not going to because you've wore many more titles than that. Lunch packer, bed changer, car seat carrier, carpooler, watcher. And, you know, none of these titles are very illustrious or prestigious or heroic. But God wants you to know today that you are shelters from the storm. You are shelters from the storm. And nobody can do that like you could do it. Nobody can do it like you do it. You are mighty warriors for your children and for your grandchildren's futures. Disguising and masquerading as bottle washers and laundry doers. You're defenders of young souls. And you are destiny protectors. Packing lunches and carrying car seats. But you are destiny protectors. Destiny protectors. That's what a mom is. Your godly examples and your virtuous ladies of faith. And every mom in this building is a soul shaper. These titles are very illustrious. They're very prestigious and they're very becoming of what I call a spiritual heroine. And that's what you are. You all, all mothers and grandmothers in this building are spiritual heroines. And every one of you have and you will again face some heartbreak. You're going to face some frustrations, some disappointments. You're going to face some anxiety and some tears and probably even some desperation still. But every single one of you would get up and do it all over again and again and again because you are a mother. And it is, a, it is an incredibly high calling to be a mother. And it is a calling that God has bestowed upon each and every one of you today that are mothers. We think of the word mother exclusively as a noun, but the word mother is also a verb. <clears throat> it is an action word. And, and moms, when you speak destiny into your child's lives, you are mothering. You are being a mother in verb tense, and you are being an action person when you speak destiny into your child's future. When you pray countless hours over their lives, you pray countless hours over their circumstances and their futures, you are mothering, masquerading as bottle washers, and car seat carriers. When you live a godly life in front of them every single day, you are practicing the art of mothering. <clears throat> and I'm serious today because mothering is kingdom business. It's kingdom business. 
And mothering is Jesus' work. Amen. 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 I remember one time on a Sunday night when I was probably about eight or nine years old, there was a Disney program came on about Sunday, on Sunday night about 7 o'clock. And I wanted to stay home and watch it. Dad wasn't going to church. I had somebody to keep me. And I said, Mom, I want to stay home tonight and watch this Disney program. And she said, no, honey, you can't do that. We're going to church. She was mothering. She was soul shaping. And when she said, no, we're going to church, she was doing Jesus' work. Praise God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Mom, when I say that, I'm talking collectively. Mom, keep on mothering. Keep on destiny protecting. Keep on speaking into their futures. It may feel like just mundane chores, but it's Jesus' work. Because many of you in here today are raising, well, all of you are raising, hopefully, future Christian husbands and fathers and future Christian mothers and wives. Some of you in here today are raising future ministers. Some of you are raising future worship leaders and future Sunday school teachers. And it is important what you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It is important what you are doing. You are doing Jesus' work disguised as a diaper bag packer. And as a mother, God has given, has given you a determining assignment. Your assignment from God is determining. After you become a mother, and for as long as you live, after you become a mother, and as long as you live, your children will be masterpieces for you to influence, to shape, and to mold for the rest of your life. And when they are very young, Sister Ann's alive. You got your baby? Who's somebody, somebody's got it right here. Mamaw's got it. That's all right. That's all right, Mamaw. Right, here, right here's a little. How old is she? Three months old. Sister Anzalon, while she's young like that, your hand is the heavy hand in her life. When she moves into her adolescent years and into early adulthood, your hand will have to lighten off the potter's wheel, but the hand of God, because you and Him are sitting here today, the hand of God will become the heavier hand. But for as long as that little baby lives and as long as you live, your hands of influence and your voice of influence and your prayer of influence will be on her and you and God are shaping destiny. Man, I could, I could haul off and preach, really. <clears throat> Man. I want to give you, I want to show you today an example of, of mothering. I want to show you an example of Jesus' work in kingdom business. Um, where's Chase and Isaac? You guys, could, would you guys help me for just a second? <clears throat> They're bringing something up here and they had to get it out of the closet. <clears throat> They were so intrigued at what I was saying, they didn't get ready. Here they come. Here they come. I want to give you a real-life illustration of Jesus' work, kingdom business. Okay. 
Okay, this is not all, because they thought some of them would slide off, and they may still. But what is in front of you here are two piles of photo albums. The taller stack of photo albums is Chase's life chronicled in pictures from the day he was born till he graduated high school. And that was done by Mamaw Claris. She was a little older when Isaac came along, and as Isaac entered into his teen years, wasn't quite as nimble, but this stack right here, and there's more. These are not all of them. This is Isaac's life from the day he was born to the day he graduated high school. The Jesus work here is this. Mamma was telling them, I love you. You're valuable. And we care. Everybody don't do it this way. Because mothering is an art. Mothering is an art. And all mothers do it differently. But I'm begging you today, don't you give up on that young man or on that young woman. You keep your hand on the wheel. And you keep your knees on the ground. And you keep your voice being lifted. And you be sure, whatever your art form is, if it's picture taken... If it's poem writing, I don't care what your mothering art form is. You just keep mothering because those kids have got to know there is a purpose for you. You are loved, you are cared for, and you are valuable. <laughs> mothering is an art form. And every artist is unique. And I wish we had the time I wish we had the time to hear all of your techniques and all of your artistry about how you're mothering your children. Because every artist is unique. I just want to encourage you today to keep on doing kingdom work and kingdom business and Jesus work by mothering. We're going to play a song right now and then... I'm going to read to you a poem uh, this afternoon. Sister Julia and their family are traveling back from Mississippi. And she sent me a text. And she said, it's multiple texts. And she said, here's a poem that Christian gave me today. And I want to read that to you, but after this song is played. Little baby told him, God, hey, I'm kind of scared. Don't really know if I want to go down there. From here it looks like a little blue ball. But that's a great big place, and I'm so small. Why can't I just? Stay here with you Did I make you mad? Don't you want me to? And God said, oh child Of course I do But there's somebody special Waiting for you So hush now baby Don't you cry Cause there's someone down there waiting His only goal in life Is making sure you're always gonna be alright A loving angel, tender, tough and strong It's almost time to go meet your mom
You'll never have a better friend or warmer touch to tuck you in. She'll kiss your bruises, your bumps and scrapes, and any time you hurt, her heart's gonna break. So hush now, babe. Don't you cry Cause there's someone down there waiting Whose only goal in life Is making sure you're always gonna be alright A loving angel, tender, tough and strong It's almost time to go meet your mom When she's talking to you Make sure you listen close Cause she's gonna teach you everything You'll ever need to know Like how to mind your manners To love and laugh and dream And she'll put you on the path That'll bring you back to me so hush now, little baby, don't you cry Cause there's someone down there waiting Whose only goal in life Is making sure you're always gonna be alright A loving angel, tender, tough and strong Come on, child, it's time I'll do my best to read Christian's poem. He's a pretty good writer, and I'm not a good reader. Mother's Day 2018, you gave me wings. My eyes saw light as I took in breath. The world... For the first time I would see. To teach and guide me through all life's journeys, a mother was given to me. With each passing year, I learned from her more, observing as through life she flew. Watching from the safety of the shelter she created as each of my feathers grew. She spake of the day that my time would come to partake in a flight of my own, brushing this off from the comfort of my consistency, for great was the fear of the unknown. She knew I could do it, but never did press, simply encouraging she continued to fly. You can do anything you want and have all life has to offer. All you have to do is try. I don't have your wings, I would say when I spoke. How could I ever fly? What if I fall and can't get control? With a smirk and a chuckle, she would sigh. I'll always be there should you ever need me. All that's left to do is soar. At once my wings were open wide, traveling further from comfort's gate. My flight began toward the sky out in front to explore the whole new world that awaits. I'll treasure forever the shelter she built and the encouragement she still gives to me. I'll always remember the lessons that she spoke and her love that lives eternally. You gave me the wings I fly with now for that I could never repay. I love you forever. And like you always, happy Mother's Day. You're an artist, Mom. And God has bestowed upon you a mighty high calling to, until the day you die, keep your hand on the potter's wheel and ask God to be the heavier hand in Jesus' name. 
I'm going to ask Brother Larry and Brother Greg to make their way up to the front. They have some presentations today, and then our pastor will be coming to close this service. Would you give the Lord Jesus a mighty hand of praise today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wasn't that awesome? My, my, my. So wonderful. We have some flowers here, and we're going to split up and kind of double team on this. It's my privilege to give the first one. And uh, she, we've had some kind words about her already, but. Uh, we have a presentation for the First Lady of the Promise, and we sure do love Sister Wendy. And uh, she's been a big asset to the Promise Care Ministry. When something happens, she'll get in touch with us, and she always says, what can I do? And she's one of a kind. So it is my privilege to get to present to her this beautiful flower down here. Sister Wendy, would you come? We also have uh, another uh, flowers to give to the associate pastor's wives because they are a vital part of this ministry too. And uh, Sister Jenny, if you don't care, we've got one we can give to you also. Multi-talented associate <laughs> pastor's wife over here, Sister Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. You may be seated. Brother Greg and Sister Thelma recently took over our Promise Care Ministry, and they're the chairpersons now. And this was their first thing that they've really participated in, but we want to say also, Sister Kristen decorated the foyer out there, and uh, all the moms, when you leave, go down, be sure you, if you're parked back there, be sure you go down. They, we have a flower in the foyer, and Sister Kristen and Sister Thelma will be out there and assist you with getting your flowers. Now, it is my privilege to get something to the youngest mother that's here today. So we got to start somewhere. How about, is there a mom 25? Is she, she's 24. Is, is there anybody younger than 24 that's a mom? All right, mine went easy. We'll ask her to come on down and get her flowers. Now I'm going to give one to probably the wisest of the. <laughs> There's a lot of wisdom that comes with age. And trust me, I know. I have honored all of the mothers here, but uh, we got a flower over here. It's a hanging basket. We're going to give it to the, the wisest mother in the house. Not that age is a bad thing because you're blessed that the Lord has given us life to live in here. So uh, is there any mothers in here that's over 100? It, okay, is there any that's over 90? 
These are some pretty flowers. Okay, is there any that's over 80? Sister Claris, bless you. We've got some flowers for you. Everybody give her a hand. Wasn't this awesome? Amen. Brother Mike talked about the art of being a mother. I wish my dad had brought, bought my mother a camera. She used sticks and switches. And <laughs> Thank God for Sister Claris. I needed every one of them. Amen. This has been awesome. And uh, once again, we want to say before we dismiss, we love and appreciate all of the mothers that are here today and grandmothers. And we want each one of you, we've got a gift for each of you as you go out uh, the front uh, door there. We've got you a a gift. And and let me thank Brother Greg and Sister Thelma and Sister Kristen for preparing that. Brother Mike and Brother Ben and all that. Sister Lauren, everybody that participated today. Won't we show them how much we appreciate all that's been done? Amen. It's been great. Amen. Amen. When, when Wendy and I were young, uh, we were both working, and we I think it was on Tuesdays, we would take the boys to a thing called Mother's Day Out. Uh, it was at First Baptist Church on Church Circle. We'd drop Bubba off. And he would just take off and play, you know, and you'd drop Lucas off and you'd think that we had dropped him off at a concentration camp. (laughs) And it was so hard to leave him because, man, he, you know, I got to think about that not too awful long ago. I wonder what they did to him because he just pitched a fit. Uh, when we'd drop him off, and, I'd, and when we'd go back to pick him up, you know, I'd say, come on, Bubba, and he'd be playing, and Lucas would come sprinting. <laughs> Thank God you came back. <laughs> well, today is Mother's Day off. Take your mom, get her a nice meal, and show her how much you love and appreciate her. Let's stand. We're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We are so thankful, Lord, today as we've set aside this day to appreciate our mothers. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us godly women in our lives and how they've uh, trained us, God, how they've cared for us. And I pray, Lord, that this service today has been a blessing to them. God, I pray that you'd go with us and keep us. And as we continue to celebrate this day, the gift of our mothers, we give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. And everyone said... Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Happy Mother's Day.